Welcome to Bible Seminar. Today's topic is Living in Water. Our speaker today is Mr. Donald Wiggins, President of Speaker for All Occasions. He is going to talk about this water. This should be good. Donna, Mr. Donald Wiggins. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Y'all can have some water. Y'all want some water? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our seminar. Today's topic is living water. Our speaker is none other than Mr. Williams. And let's turn to our scriptures.
uh, she had already asked. Jesus had already asked her. He said, give me a bottle of water. And uh, give me something to drink. And she did. She complied and she gave him something to drink. Jesus said, 
anyone who drinks this water will what? Will be thirsty again. He's getting ready to expound on the fact that the water she has will not satisfy a deeper inner thirst for God. Look what he says now. And, and the woman said to him, uh, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty to have or have to come to the, here to draw again. So she's curious now as to the water. What is it? How can you draw this water out of this well? And how can you satisfy this thirst uh, so that I will not have to come back to this well again? So he, and Jesus said to her, number 16, said to her, uh, here you're talking about go and call the husband. And she said, I have no husband. And she said, as a matter of fact, Jesus said, as a matter of fact, you have five. But we're not going to address that because this talks about the relationship that she is desperately seeking. She's desperately seeking a relationship with the father. And then it goes on. Let's go to another scripture. Uh, John 8, 5, 4. Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say. He is our God. So here he's telling her that if he glorifies himself, then it means nothing. He's seeking his own glory. But he said that he seeks to do the glory of his Father. And, it, and, and that's different from having to worship the physical presence of who is supplying your daily, every daily, your daily needs. Like that she was talking about the water that was supplied to them, their sons, and their livestock. But now Jesus is talking about a spiritual water. Here, let's check another scripture. John 6, 40. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son who believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Here he was talking about the water that he gives her will be that of eternal life. But she must look upon what? Jesus Christ. Uh, verse John 7.38 said, Anyone who believes in him, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. And that's why I was talking about here, uh, rivers of living water, is that when you believe in the Son, it's going to bring you eternal life. And so we're going to, in eternal life, the water itself is a pure sus substance. It really don't have any taste, but it reminds of the flowing of water, reminds of, of the voice of God. And if you can distinguish that voice among all the, all, all the other distractions in the world, then you will have an understanding what it means to live, to know, to recognize the voice of God. Everyone who is, listen again, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. And here's why they'll be thirsty again. Because this is something that most people fail to understand is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And most people are will thirst again because they fail to have a relationship with the Son. And once you have a relationship with the Son, then you you have what we call the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy
Holy Spirit has to be revealed daily. Or uh, some people would do it by prayer, some people would do it by worship, uh, Bible study, some people would do it uh, with a song, some people would do it with sacrifice. But the uh, relationship has to be filled with or uh, renewed every day so that the Holy Spirit can work in your life. The Holy Spirit gives you the power of, of that of a Christian. Now, what happens, the Holy Spirit is a person. And once you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God and the Holy Spirit commune together. You have direct access to that of God. Jesus has now set down at the right hand of God. So when you have trials and tribulations and problems, you can pray to Jesus, but it's your relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit that will deliver you. You just have to know how to use the power because salvation is to save one from the power and the penalty of sin. Okay? The power and the penalty of sin. That's what salvation is. And so that's what she is talking about. Jesus is going to bring her to the point where she, he says that you need a relationship with the Son, which is Christ. So that once you have a relationship, you can have the Spirit of God, which will give you eternal life. And then 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Here he was talking about the hour is coming where you will not worship at a physical location. Uh, the Jews worship at Jerusalem. She worshiped uh, at Mount Gerizim uh, at the foot of uh, the city of Zetar. So he was saying that you will, there comes a time in worship where you will have, will have to worship at these physical places. And then it says, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. Here he's telling her that salvation is that of the Jews because the gospel began with that of the Jews. How he talks about Jesus who came down through 40 and 2 generations, born to the uh, Mary and Joseph, and how he grew in wisdom and knowledge and statue as that of Jesus Christ to bring salvation or the hope of God to the Jews. And that's where we are now. Because this is the first time that Jesus had made, him, or God in Jesus, had made his physical presence known. That man can overcome the power of, the, the power of sin and the penalty of sin. Then it says, number 22, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Here he's talking about the spirit of Christ. And he's talking about the truth. The spirit, the spirit of truth also is part of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we want to, the truth, we want to bear witness that we are saved from the power and the penalty of sin. And we can only do that in the light of Jesus Christ. Now look, look at this. It says, God is spirit, and those 
those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is a spirit. And so we know that it's just like water is invisible. We know that water is in that bottle. We know that water has no taste. But we know that God is a spirit. And that spirit resides with man in terms of the Holy Spirit. Now it has to be filled or renewed every day because we, our relationship with Jesus Christ. But the power of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin, uh, act as a comforter. And it, it's always, we always want the presence of God in our lives. And that's, a, that's the salvation part, knowing that you have God in your life and knowing that he's there to help you in a time of trouble. And 25, the woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. So here he fulfills her uh, knowledge of the Messiah. And he said, I am he. And I am uh, goes back to Exodus when God was telling Moses who he should be called. He said, I am who I am. And, and so Jesus reflected that fact that he is the Messiah. 27, then the disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do you see? Or why are you talking with her? So the disciples came back and they were shocked. They were mobbed. They were uh, surprised that Jesus would be talking to her. But Jesus is no respecter of person when it comes to the Spirit of God. And that's what he was trying to uh, relate to her in that you need a relationship with the Father, but you have to have a relationship with the Son. And there are other people who desire to keep you from that relationship. And you might say the disciples were surprised because Jesus was talking this to this Samaritan. And it's been held through, throughout the cultures that the Jews and the Samaritans should not intermingle with each other. And number 26, so the woman left the her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. So here this woman who was uh, thought maybe to be immoral in some way, now have received the word that she has the spirit of Christ and have eternal life. And here it is, it says that he that believes in him, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. She offers this testimony and this witness about this man called Jesus. And so that's the same thing that we want to do as believers. We want to have the spirit of Christ uh, guided by that of the Holy Spirit so we can witness to others and let them know that salvation is of Christ. And so they went into town and from my reading, this party, they had a party or they had a celebration. And this celebration lasts a total of two days. So I hope you have a better understanding now of what it is to have a relationship with Christ and knowing that in your relationship you have eternal life. And in your eternal life you have the spirit of Christ. And we want that spirit to flow out of your heart as that of living waters. Let me take you to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for allowing us to come to you because our souls thirst.
worship with you today. And our flesh is faint for you today because we come as the because of dry water, the water that's in, not in the land. But God, we ask that you continue to be with us. Uh, we look to you because all our help and strength is coming from you today. Uh, continue to guide us in the way you would have us to go. Uh, protect us from dangers seen and unseen. Open up the windows of heaven and pour us our blessings today upon our families, upon those in the hospitals, for those, those behind prison bars. Bless our nation today, our leaders today, our troops today. Bless those perishing in their own sins. And we will continue